Okay, we're going to call this Finance Committee meeting to order. Presents are Council Members Frazier, Cost, Bub, Blake, and Marmy. First item on the agenda is a request for legislation uh, to provide for the issuance of $2.95 million of bond anticipated notes in anticipation of the issuance of bonds for the purpose of paying the cost of construction for Sharon Valley Road Fire Station Number 5 including site preparation and all necessary appurtenances and declaring an emergency. That sums it up. Uh, we're going to borrow um, $2,950,000 to begin construction on the fire station. Um, this is a one-year bond anticipation note. A uh, year from today, we'll decide what to do with it further, whether we renew the note or reduce it or sell bonds or whatever seems to be to our advantage at that time. Okay. A lot for a motion. Second. second. Motion by Bob, second by cost. Any questions and or discussion? Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Blake. Is it can can we can this committee get a description of what all services or what all is this two point nine million dollars gonna be going for? Um, you know, what's the what's the, I know this probably isn't directed to you, Auditor Johnson, but I'm, I'm only arranging the financing, so I understand I see Director Rhodes coming behind you. Yeah, I'll be happy to scan the uh, bid out and uh, send it to all the council. And that will entail entail everything that's going on. It'll entail all the alternatives and entail everything. Uh, it'll entail everything we're entering into contract to build on the new fire station. Okay. And then what's, um, I know earlier the mayor came to Kiwanis and talked about the station being sort of a secondary primary. Mm -hmm. So what can you, you can, what is that meaning, like it's how many bays and stuff is going to uh, be in the We're going to have three bays and it'll be staffed with a full fire truck and it's going to be a fully staffed fire department okay. station. So it'll be a medic and a truck? Yes. Okay. So then that'll be five people up there for two for the medic and three for the truck. You'd, you'd, ha you'd have to confirm that with the chief. Okay. But typically that's what it, that number is. Again, confirm that with the chief, but that's, he's going to run a full station out there. Okay. So if we have, sorry Mr. Chairman, I don't want to take up the time, but if anyone else isn't, you have a, go ahead, I, I have further questions, yeah. but if Mark, Mr. Frazier has some. So for the first time period for this issuance, it says up to 25 years. Do we know how long we're issuing the bonds for with interest rates creeping up and what's one year? No. Um, we'll decide that next year. This is just for one year. One year. So uh, when we issue bonds, you know, we'll determine the length and, and this is what the interest will be. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So going back to what I was asking earlier, so if this is going to have a truck and a medic, in this facility uh, being a fully staffed fire station um, then what will how will that impact the Howland Collender Street station? Again you have to ask the fire chief about that about staffing. So you haven't had any discussions with the fire chief to tell us tonight how that's going to come Again forward? let me reiterate myself. The fire chief does the staffing of the buildings. I build the buildings, the auditor finances the buildings. Mm -hmm. And the fire chief is anticipating running full and fully staffed fire departments. How he appropriates his staffing levels will depend on who calls in sick that day and who is on vacation, who's taking a comp day. So one time you might have four, one time you might have five, one time you might, you know, I don't know. The chief, the chief will go over all that if he hasn't already. That's why we had the individual meetings to go over this stuff. Well, because you, you're coming to council to this committee to ask for two point nine million dollars for this fire station, and so knowing the services that are going to come out of that station is, I think, it's a reasonable request, a reasonable but question to ask. Jeremy, it's not an unreasonable request at all. But you're asking me to be specific. Are we going to have three and two? I don't make those decisions, neither does Steve, the fire chief did. That's why the fire chief was in all the meetings that we all had together. That's why he was there okay. to answer those questions. And I, I think it's an appropriate question for you to ask him. Okay. So if there's going off of, um, I did a fire right along on Friday night. And so talking to Assistant Chief Decker and Captain Bolte and knowing that typically there's two um, guys that run a medic and three that do a fire truck. And so if you're telling me that there's going to be a medic and a fire truck, 
in this new station, then that seems to be a reasonable number to understand. Let, let me give you a number since you want to talk numbers. 2015, we had four fire stations. Four fire stations. In 2015, we had 72 firefighters. In 2019, we're operating three stations. In 2019, we have 79 firefighters. And we've asked for, with Barbara's help, a safer grant. So we'd like to take that number up a little higher. Again, let me reiterate. In 2015, we had four stations. Mm -hmm. We had 72 full-time firefighters. Mm -hmm. 2019, we have 79 firefighters. Mm -hmm. And we got three stations. Mm -hmm. We want more. I think the, the question I'm asking is, what's, what's the effect of this new station will have a Hollander Street? What's the, what is that effect going to be? I don't because know. even you with have the, to ask the fire chief. Even with the new safer grants, you're not going to be able to man a full station over at Hollander Street Station. Well, that's your opinion. The fire chief, you'd have to ask him what his opinion is. Okay. Well, then there's from looking at the numbers from what we have and the way that we currently are distributing our forces, that was only going to be even with a safer grant, which have we applied for the safer grants? Yes. Have we received the safer grants? Not yet. We're yeah, waiting. What's the timeline on receiving the safer grant? We'll know by the end of oh. the month. And how many positions will that be? He asked for five. Okay. That doesn't mean that if we're awarded, you know, they could make an mm -hmm. But we did ask for five. Mm -hmm. So even if we get five, it will typically be 60 to run just a medic unit. Out let, me, let me reiterate to you. In 2015, we had four stations. We had 72 firefighters. 2015, four stations, 72 firefighters. If we come into 2022, because this station will take more than a year to build, at that point, we'll know what we've got the safer grant. And if we need to make an adjustment at that point in dollars into staffing, we still have the time to do that. We still have time to do that. So we'll know what we get this year in safer grant. We'll know what we get next year in the safer grant. And if we have to adjust, then at that point the chief will make his case to adjust. But that would be the 2022 budget. It wouldn't be the 2020 budget, and certainly not the 2019 budget. Mm -hmm. So being discussed about this station for over a year, neither one of you as directors are aware of any discussions about how we're going to be staffing. Uh, Absolutely, we've had discussions on and, how we're going to staff it. And it's the chief's purview yeah. to answer those questions, not ours. Okay, yeah. but tonight you're coming forward asking for $2.9 million Correct. for us to approve this fire station. Correct. So why wouldn't we have answers tonight about how the building is going to be done? Jeremy, 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 we've had these discussions. We've had them. We've talked about them. We, you as a council member, you as a council member, have every right to make an amendment to offer more dollars into the personnel of the fire department. You can do that. And if we have more dollars in the personnel department, you can hire more firefighters. We have 70, I believe it's 79 firefighters. I believe that's what the budget of 2019 allowed. Mm -hmm. You're talking about a 2020 budget. Our first approach is we've put out a safer grant, unlike, not unlike a lot of departments. Again, the chief will be analyzing those metrics, mm -hmm. and he has, mm -hmm. but he's just not here tonight to answer the question. I see. And so he's not here tonight to answer them. So that's why I'm asking you, as his supervisor and his. As okay, his can I this. can I just uh, kind of comment? I mean, yeah. I've been on this council longer than anyone, and um, I will tell you that. Uh, there's no specific numbers that even if the chief were here tonight that he could provide in an exact amount of where he would do that two years down the road okay we don't know what's going on the strategy that is being incorporated here is that we need a fire station in this location because uh, this is where the majority of our runs are happening basically in the downtown station and where they're putting this station and, and that's where the need came about as far as this goes. The staffing of it and the exact numbers and the, the model as far as specifics has not been, they won't be able to figure that out until the time of. However, the model is that there's gonna be two medics and a fire truck, and that's how it's gonna be staffed. That's their, what they're anticipating. And 
Um, if they need to make adjustments, meaning if there are, is a difference in the staffing levels at that point, then it's going to change, including if it's higher. <laughs> it, it could be higher or it could be lower, but we do not know what our staffing levels are going to be at that exact point in time or where they're going to be any time into the future. We know what we budget for, and that's it. And so um, if you're asking for specifics as far as numbers, there's nobody that can provide those to you for down the road. I'm asking for what the impact is going to be for we're wanting to build a station on Sharon Valley Road for the reasons of reducing the response time in that area. Are we going to be able to maintain the same service at the Hollander Street Station so that we're not reducing or increasing response times for that area? Of the city? It will we don't want to okay. reduce uh, times in one area and increase times in another area. So that's, that's the concern. That's the concern. If I'm, if well, I'm no, hold on, hold on. Go ahead, Director. It depends on a day-to-day -day basis. The last OSU Michigan game, 12 firefighters marked off sick. When things like that happen, the chief has to make adjustments on what stations are going to be dark, what stations are going to be open, and how much overtime he has to expend. So I'm sure the chief will operate on a day-to-day -day basis on his staffing when he opens a station. But to require an answer today, when we're talking about two years down the road, and a safer grant that we haven't heard about yet, is just asking the chief to tell you something that then isn't going to be true and now he has either exaggerated, lied, whatever word you want to use, the council and He's not going to do that. He's going to tell you, he'll decide on a day-to-day -day basis, what stations are open depending on manpower and depending on available overtime. That's what he's going to tell you. Well, this will be my last comment, Chairman, because I don't want to belabor this, but I don't think it's unreasonable to look at your current staffing, your current contract language to know where you're going to distribute people. I, I think that's a reasonable request. I mean, it's within the contract of where it says how, how many men have to be on each of these vehicles. So if you know you're going to build a building, you know you're going to put certain vehicles in the building, then you can assume, assume and plan according to that language. And so I don't think that's something that's completely unreasonable. And I'm not asking about something for two years from now. If, I'm asking something that we could look at now and be planning for. If the chief decides to staff every vehicle or if he decides to cross staff the station, you're absolutely right. But so depending on what, but will depend, be used at the Hollander Street it's, Station. It's used now. I don't know if it'll be used then. That's a question for the chief. The chief decides. It is his purview. He may report to me, but I don't tell the chief how to run the fire department. I believe I've told that body, this body, that once before. Thank you. So I have a question for the safety director and a question for the auditor. Safety Director, do you feel that it's in the city's best interest to build this fire station to improve the response time in the service community? Well, absolutely. Not only do we have the longest response times in this neighborhood, but there's Evans Athletic Complex, the school is expanding, there's two senior citizen centers, homes right down the road. Ohio State is always expanding with more people. This area is just growing and growing and growing. To the auditor. Yes, sir. Are we able to afford $2.9 million in bond anticipation notes, and do you feel confident in, in where we are in our bond rating and in our debt? I'm confident. I yield. Any additional questions or comments? Mm -hmm. One more. I'm sorry. Sure, Mr. Blake. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Will we maintain the same level of service at Hollander, Mr. Director Palm? I don't know. Question for the fire chief. Mr. Chairman, I plan to abstain for lack of information. I don't, I don't know if that's a. I, you're you're welcome to abstain, but that's really not a justifiable reason. You either are yes or no, and this is only going to full council. And um, I, I mean, they've answered every single question that you. No, they have not asked. answered every single question. They answered it. To, they didn't. You may not like the answer that they answered it with, but they answered it. If they say they don't know something, then they don't know. Well, I'm sorry, but they've been talking about this for over a year, and you can't tell me where, if you're going to be doing cross staff at Hollander Street Station, if you, where you're going to be putting yeah. staffing. Mr. Blake, if, if I if I ask long. you what you're going to be doing on this exact date next year, can you tell me 
exactly what you will be doing on this date next year. Mr. Chairman, I'm asking if you're looking at the current language right. of this contract and where we're going to be putting people, that's the question I'm asking. If this, if this impacts the Hollander Street Station, are we taking one issue on the west side of town and affecting it with the area around the Hollander Street Station? Well, I think that, that you know, if, you, if you're thinking that, then you're thinking that our fire chief is not adequately utilizing his resources and putting staffing where it is appropriately needed. Now, um, as far as just making sure the response times, where, where have you been the last six months when the north end has had response times that were increased by over 10 or 15 minutes because of construction? Why, are, why weren't you pounding your fist then? And why are you pounding your fist now about the response times? You're talking about the, the Florence Hill Road Correct. construction. That's construction, so. Exactly, but it's response times. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and all I'm saying is that um, as far as abstaining, you're, you're welcome to abstain, but really an abstention and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Law Director, that's just for reasons that, well, he, he's almost refusing to vote, not does, does he have justification to abstain? It's a personal decision for each council member to make and they okay. have to defend that decision themselves. Okay, very good. So if you wish to abstain, that is your decision. So. Any further additional questions or comments? I'll, I'll make a comment to summarize, if I may. Sure. Um, I'm absolutely supportive of this. When it comes to the fire station need and the financial stability that we have in our community now, it's the right investment to make at the right time. When it comes to um, the appropriateness of, of ordinance number 1918, the, the auditor has come forward with a plan in order to fund this. We have the plans in place in order to build it. And this is the right step in the right direction for our community. So I thank everybody for the work that they've done over the last few years to get this there. I want to thank Barbara on the SAFER grant in order to continue to, to find ways in the future to staff. And I think that we'll have an absolutely great solution when the fire station comes online in order to staff it and promote the safety and well-being of our citizens. And with that, I'll yield. Thank you. Anything additional? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Same. One abstention. That motion passes four to zero. Next item on the agenda is a request for legislation to provide for the issuance of not to exceed $2.55 million of bond anticipation notes in anticipation of the issuance of bonds for the purpose of paying the cost of Tamarack 40th Street upgrade stormwater improvements and all necessary appurtenances thereto and declaring an emergency. Again, I think the uh, language you just read pretty much describes what we're doing here. We're going to borrow $2,550,000 for the uh, stormwater upgrade in that particular area. Uh, Mr. Loomis is here tonight if you have any questions about exactly what they're doing or, or how they're going to do it or how long it's going to take them to do it, I would yield to him. But otherwise, uh, this is not paid for with general fund dollars. It's uh, stormwater, uh, and it's something that's uh, necessary to do. Thank you. I'll offer a motion. I'll second. Motion by Bob. Second by Frazier. Any questions and or discussion? <coughs> Can I just ask a question? Though? Sure, Roger. Hey, Roger, just can you kind of give us a summary of what all this entails? And <coughs> yeah, this is part of uh, what we're calling our Tamarack uh, Transmission Line Project. Um, we did a master plan back in 2012. Part of that master plan is to get more water for fire protection out on the west end of town. Um, and so that entails, and we've been running uh, a water main for the last seven or eight years down Country Club Drive. When we re redid Country Club, there was, we put a water main in there. Uh, we ran it up, uh, when they built the schools, we ran a water main up um, King, King Road. This connects that main, that transmission main, which actually goes all the way from the water plant. It's going to go clear out to um, um, Kaufman Road, West Main and Kaufman. Um, and it goes up 40th Street, kind of over the river and through the woods out there. And, uh, um, and, but part of that, once we have 40th Street torn up, we have some 
flooding issues out in, in that uh, Cherry Valley 40th Street area with stormwater issues. And so while we have that road tore up uh, for the water main, uh, we're going to uh, put in some, and, and we're doing it, we're in the process of doing a study in that area of, because of the new bridge that's going in, the other things going in there, we, we've, we've done some preliminary studies there. And so this work here is what's needed to kind of as, as the backbone to the rest of the work that's going to happen because we got to get the water down to that main ditch down there where on the at the end of 40 or the, if you don't know where the uh, radio station is there's a big ditch down there uh, we're going to get uh, this sets up the uh the lines for the storm water to get down to that area there and then the next step will be to do the do the storm water on the other kind of where that bridge and all that stuff is going in at but but the main for, focus of the job is it'll be uh Four point almost five million dollars for the water line to go out through there, but but um, but 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 while we're doing it, we're, we're gonna put the storm line in as well. So, and then for this scope of work, when's the start date that you're expecting? Well, the plans are the plans are near done right now. I mean, our plan was to start this in September. It's September, so we're, we're not we're not done with that. We we got got delayed on some design stuff, and we had some issues with. Uh, getting some easements and some other things that kind of backed us backed us up on that but, but we now have all the easements in place we're just getting some money to, to pay for the easements um, uh, a minor amount of money it's not you know tons of money to do that but uh, the design got delayed a little bit because of the direction we were going and some of the it's a very tricky project because there's a lot of directional boring uh, because we're going through a woods and there's no access because of the river that's in the way and, and then we got state route 16 we got to go under so we had to deal with ODOT, and so there was just a whole bunch of things that kind of kept delaying us. So hopefully we're going to bid this by the end of the year. Our plan right now is to bid it by the end of the year, and then it would start sometime in the first quarter of next year. Uh, it's, it's going to be, uh, I believe we have it listed as an 18-month project, so it's going to be uh, a considerable, big, uh, very big project. So. Any further questions and or discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. That motion passes 5 0. Thank you. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is a request for legislation to provide for the issuance of not to exceed five, uh, $525,000 of bond anticipated notes in the anticipation of the issuance of bonds for the purpose of paying the cost of the water system improvements and all necessary appurtenances thereto and declaring an emergency. This is the um, water portion, I think, of the same project. Um, we've borrowed money earlier for this. This is just basically contingency funding. Um, we have to do two separate pieces of legislation because they can't co-mingle storm water and actual water. Motion. Second. Motion by Frazier, second by Bob. Any questions and or discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Yeah. That motion passes 5 0. Next item on the agenda is a request for legislation uh, consolidating two bond anticipation notes, issues uh, of the city of Newark and declaring an emergency. Um, this ordinance just combines the two we just talked about. So when they're marketed, you're only uh, selling one instrument. Motion. Motion by Fraser, second by Bob. Any questions and or discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. That motion passes 5-0. Next item on the agenda is a request for legislation accepting the amounts and rates as determined by the Budget Commission and authorizing the necessary tax levies and certifying them to the county auditor and declaring an emergency. This is a housekeeping uh, matter that I bring before council every year. It's something we're required to do. We have no voted millage, but uh, by statute, we're awarded 3.1 mills, and we also have uh, three-tenths of a mill for the accrued liability of the fire portion of the police and fire pension fund, and three-tenths of a mill, the same thing for the police, giving us a total of 3.7 mills. Uh, this has to be filed by the clerk of council by October 1st. Motion. Second. Motion by Frazier. Second by Bob. Any questions and or discussion? Yes. When it comes to the districts, um, what, what's the difference, 54, 55? How does that separate out in the city? 
Well, no, because that, it, it goes by overlapping school districts, so it would deal with, you know, Granville, Licking Valley, you know, right. North Fork, and so on. Any additional questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. That motion passes 5-0. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is a request for appropriation in the amount of $380.06. My request doesn't quite match Steve's. <laughs> yeah, it's a disappropriation. Yeah. Um, this request pertains to the current EMS grant. Um, when we planned the budget last year, we were using the funding level that we received in 2018, and the 19 grant came in a little less, so... That's what the disappropriation is about. Motion. Second. Motion by Frazier, second by Bob. Questions and or discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. That motion passes 5-0. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is a request for appropriation in the amount of $110,000. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We're asking for $110,000 of the unappropriated balance of the street fund. This is uh, for the 2019 SALT purchase agreement. We're going to go ahead and fulfill 90% of that agreement. And uh, we've got about 800 tons of SALT coming, which will bring the SALT barn up to 2,500 tons in anticipation of beginning for the winter. Motion. Second. Motion by Bob, second by cost. Questions and or discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. That motion passes 5-0. Next item on the agenda is a request for appropriation in the amount of $20,685. Good evening. Good evening. This is in reference to our um, Justice Reinvestment Incentive Grant. ODRC is actually two months behind in paying out our first payment. They attempted to pay it, but they sent it to the county. So the county would not send it over to us, so they rejected the payment and sent it back. So the director of the Bureau of Community Sanctions has to find the money and then resend it to us. But we're trying to get these accounts uh, set up so when we get the money, we can start uh, making the payments on the expenditures. Okay. Motion. Second. Motion by Fraser, second by Bob. Any questions and or discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. That motion passes by zero. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is a request for appropriation in the amount of $4,625. This is for the sale of a fire truck on Gov deals. They'd like the money to go back into the vehicle account. Second. Motion by Cost, second by <coughs> Frazier. Any questions and or discussions? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. That motion passes 5-0. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that concludes this finance committee meeting. And next up is service. All right, we'll call the service committee meeting to order. Those present are myself, Rath, Cost, Bug, Blake, and Lang. Up first. Consider resolution number 19-66, authorizing and directing the director of public service of the city of Newark, Ohio, to enter into contract without competitive bidding for the rebuild and reinstallation of one screening unit at the city of Newark water wastewater treatment plant. Mr. Loomis. Yeah, this is a case of a sole source pr provider. We have a, a screen at the head of our wastewater plants, similar way we have our water plant, but this is our wastewater plant. Uh, the, these screens, we installed them a number of years ago. They're fine screens. They're designed to protect equipment that comes into the plant. Um, um, and it is in need of repair. We, we repaired one, I think it was two years ago now. It might have been last year. Uh, there's two of them, so this is the second one, and it's needed need of repair now. 
Uh, the cost to rebuild those is, is I think I had it originally estimated at about $100,000. We got a quote today, a, a good quote today, and I think it was $80,000, $85,000. So, so that's over the, the, the bid amount, but, but again, this is a sole source supplier. It's a single company. It's, it's, it's specialized materials. It's plastics. It's, it's uh, specific um, a chain type stuff that goes into this unit. And so that we're requesting that uh, we, we um, enter into contract then without bidding for the repair of that unit and removal of the unit and send it, we got to send it uh, back to them for rebuild and, and, and reinstall, so. All right, um, thank you. <clears throat> Any questions for the committee? I'll make a motion. Motion Second. by Lang. Second by Bob. Any questions from the audience? Seeing none, all those in favor of passing this on the council, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Then I'll pass by and zero. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Up next, consider ordinance number 19-22, change in the zoning classification of certain real property, property generally described as 1435 through 1445 West Main Street, City of Newark, Licking County, Ohio, from that of MFR, Multifamily Residence District, to MB, Medium Intensity Business District, Zoning Code of the City of Newark, Ohio. Mr. Sasson. Mr. Chairman, I'll speak to the next three items on your agenda since they're similar in nature, although they address different applications. I can't speak to the specifics about what the applicant's intent is, but I'm simply asking this committee to pass these three pieces of legislation on to council, who will then refer all three to the Planning Commission where the real heavy lifting will be done, and then a recommendation will come back from Planning Commission to council for all of you to consider not only the intent of the applicant, but the recommendation of the Planning Commission as well. So I'm just simply asking that it be passed on for that process to run its course. Basically, we know no specifics about this right now. The Planning Commission will do the research, make recommendations to us, and then... Following we'll a public hearing on each of them, yes. <coughs> all right, thank you. Any questions from the committee? I'll offer a motion. Offer a motion by Mr. Bubb. Second. Seconded by Mr. Lang. Any questions from the audience? Seeing none, all those in favor of passing this on to council, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, <laughs> same sign. No call forward, 5 0. Up next, ordinance number 19 23, changing the zoning classification of certain real property, generally described as 680 Wesley Avenue, City of Newark, Licking County, Ohio from that of RH, High Density Single Family Residence District, to GO, General Office, Zoning Code of the City of Newark, Ohio. Motion. Motion Second. by Bob. Seconded by Lang. We have no information on this, so I anticipate no questions, but are there any questions from the committee? Are there any questions from the audience? <coughs> Excuse me. Seeing none, all those in favor of passing the sign signify by saying aye. 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 So all opposed, same sign. That'll move forward with a 5 0 vote. Up next, ordinance number 19 24, changing the zoning classification of certain real property generally described as 176 Mount Vernon Road. City of Newark, Licking County, Ohio, from that of MFR, Multifamily Residence District, to LC, Limited Commercial District. Zoning code of the city of Newark, Ohio. Motion. Motion by Bub. Second. Seconded by Lang. Questions or comments from the committee? Mr. Cost. I, the only comment I would make on this, on this one is that this uh, was asked for at the temporary board of zoning appeals. And it is a situation where everything that touches that piece of, of land is all residential um, housing. I don't know what the, it's a single, <coughs> what they call that now, single family or single family. And there is not one piece of commercial property that touches that on, on any side. And the only comment I would make when, when this is being looked at is, it, in my opinion, it's spot zone. We're trying to put a, trying to put a commercial uh, operation in the middle of a residential situation. So I, I would strongly encourage just taking a, a, a real hard look at this. Thank you. And I'll make a comment about it. Bill, I've, I heard you loud and clear, and when we come into an opinion, I will write an opinion on that. Also. All right? 
whether I whether it's a spot that. zone or not. Thanks for bringing that up. Any other questions or comments? All right, seeing none, all those in favor of pass here to sign, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Aye. Now we'll move forward with a four to one vote. And that concludes the service committee. Up next will be the Ways and Means Committee. We'll call the Ways and Means Committee to order. We have one item. Consider resolution number 1967. Resolution repealing res resolution 1933 and amending the distribution and use of the emergency medical transport revenue. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, as you know, earlier uh, this year, uh, Director Bob and I were in and we changed the EMS model to help fund and pay for the new fire station. And at that time, we thought that was a good effective date. But through all the uh, uh, consideration towards the fire station that has been given, through all the time, the plans, and things of this nature, we simply haven't started the station yet. So instead of having the auditor's office move a bunch of money into an account that's already full to make payments for new fire station, we'd like to make the effective date January 1, 2020. And that's the only change. Okay, thank you. Uh, are there any questions in the committee? Well, I'll do a second. Second by Labudis. Motion by Bob. Any questions from the audience? I have a question. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Groves, this does not change the amounts or how they're distributed, just no. the date? Of just the effective date. Thank you. And we'll be able to appropriately plan for this in uh, the 2020 budget. Okay. Thank you. So really, none of those percentages change. That's right. It was just changing the, the date in <clears throat> January. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Seeing none, all in favor of passing the uh, full council? Aye. Aye. <laughs> uh, opposed? Same sign. Three to zero passes to for, uh, council. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Up next is capital improvement. Okay, I'd like to call this meeting of the Capital Improvements Committee to order. Those present are myself, Lang, Hall, Rath, Lobutis, and Blake in for Fennell. On the First up on the agenda, we've got uh, Resolution 1963, uh, appropriation in the amount of $1,900 for lease payments. Our esteemed Auditor Johnson. Um, somehow, the uh, schedule for the lease payments was short by this amount of money. I don't know, there's a uh, person who did a remarkable job of, of managing the lease payments and left the city and uh, someone else picked up that responsibility along the line and one thing led to another and we're $1,900 short for the lease payments. So we're asking for that appropriation. Thank you. Hmm? Any questions from the committee? Motion. Motion by Raff. Second. Second by Lebutis. Any questions from the audience? All those in favor of sending this on to full council, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. That passes 5-0. Thank you. Okay, up next we've got uh, resolution 1968, appropriation amount of $16,169 uh, for the model of the auditor's office. Director hey, Rhodes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is additional capital improvement dollars than what we had in our budget. About two years ago, uh, we came before this committee and we asked for some capital improvement dollars to aid in moving the city seal to downtown Newark. After a lot of thought and consideration, we've decided at this time not to move the seal, thus leaving a PO with this amount of dollars uh, encumbered for the better part of two years. So what we've done is we've unencumbered it, and now I'd like to re-encumber that money. We're putting it into an account because we're beginning to put some dollars in to, to redo the auditor's office. If you look around the building, uh, since we've been in, we redid the stairwells, we painted them, uh, we redid the uh, community development office, we redid the HR office, which in turn gave uh, council members their own office, which I believe as a former council member was long overdue. And uh, just a personal opinion, but I'll share it that way. Uh, 
So the next scope of work in City Hall would be the auditor's office. And if you've been up there, it's long overdue. And uh, we're going to make some enhancements in that office and some changes. But uh, as we do that, we're going to look for older dollars that are in POs that we can close, such as this one, so we don't take dollars out of current dollars. It doesn't mean we won't use current dollars, but we're going to look this way first before we get into other dollars. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rose. Any discussion from the uh, committee? Motion. Motion by Rath. Second. Second by Labutis. Any discussion from the audience? I guess I'd, I'll just make one quick comment. I, I appreciate the work you guys have done um, on the building here. Certainly the, having the audio, uh, office for the uh, council has been, I think, beneficial to you know, us getting together, being able to talk. Um, so thank you. Um, with that, I guess I'll, I'll take a vote then. All those in favor of sending this on the full council, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Passes 5-0. This committee stands adjourned, and full council will reconvene here at 7 o'clock. Thank you, Mr. Chair.